I greet you in Jesus' name. Before we read the word of God, let us bow our heads together for a word of prayer. Our gracious God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that we may go through your word. We pray that even the spirit of truth can come down and talk to us. Talk to your people who are watching through the telecast. Transform our lives as we learn about the fruits of the spirit. May you help us, Lord, to understand your will in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic today is the fruits of the Spirit. You see, we have fruit-bearing plants and plants that do not bear fruits. It end matters how beautiful a non-fruit-bearing plant is, but because of its genetics, because of its nature, because of its makeup, there is no way it can bear fruits. It doesn't matter how much water you add to the soil. It doesn't matter how much nutrients you add to the soil. The agriculturists talk of nitrogen. They talk of phosphorus. They talk of potassium as some of the elements which help plants in their growth. It doesn't matter for a non fruit bearing plant. You can add as much of these as possible, but because of its genetic makeup, it is impossible for such a plant to bear fruits because it is genetically made, made up in that way. The same is true with fruit bearing plants. If they are nurtured properly, if they are planted in fertile soil, if they receive nutrients, fruit bearing plants, at the right season, they bear fruits. By the way, there is no way a lemon tree can bear an orange fruits. Vice versa, there is no way an orange tree can bear lemon fruits because an orange tree is genetically an orange tree and therefore it will bear orange fruits. The Bible says in Matthew, the chapter is 7, verse 16, the Bible says, he, he shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? The Bible is telling us that those that are called by God's name will bear the fruits of the Spirit. So the reason why we don't bear the fruits of the Spirit is because the Spirit is not in us. We need to have the Spirit first so that we are able to bear the fruits of the Spirit. There is a danger of not bearing fruits. Go with me to the 21st chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 19. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. The Bible says, Jesus, seeing a fig tree by the rod, he went up to it. But when he went up to it, if you go back to verse 18, it tells us that Jesus was hungry. And when you are hungry, you look forward to eating. And when you look at food, or when you get into the kitchen, there is something that happens in your body system, which prepares your digestive system for eating. So as Jesus was approaching this tree, the Bible tells us that he was hungry. So therefore, I'm expecting that Jesus was expecting to find something from this tree. Jesus expected fruits in this tree. The Bible tells us that the tree looked good from afar, but it was far from being good. There are Christians today who look good from afar. When you look at them, the way they conduct themselves, they look like Christians. They look like people who bear the fruits of the Spirit. But some of them, they are far from being good. Just like this fig tree that Jesus approached this morning as he was hungered. The Bible tells us that when he arrived at the tree, he found nothing, nothing on it but leaves. The tree looked good from afar, but it was far from being good because there were no fruits on the tree. I have a question this morning. Was the tree a fruit-bearing tree? Or it was a non-fruit-bearing tree? 
I, I, I assume this morning that the tree was a fruit-bearing tree. Because as Jesus approached it, he expected to get fruits from it. But the Bible tells us nothing was found in the tree but leaves. My brothers and sisters, there are families today which have beautiful homes, but those homes are nothing but leaves. There are Christians today who look like Christians, who dress like Christians, who eat like Christians, who pray like Christians, but they are far from being Christians. They pretend to have the Spirit of God, but they are far from having the Spirit of God. Then the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Listen to the danger of pretense. You see, this tree pretended to Jesus. It pretended that it had fruits. Listen to the danger of that. Jesus says here, after approaching the tree, having found nothing on the tree, my Bible then says here, then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. And the Bible says, immediately, not one hour later, not a day later, immediately the Bible says, the tree withered. There is a danger of not bearing fruits. If we do not bear fruits, we will wither like this fig tree. And my brothers and sisters, we live in a world where the evil spirit, instead of this Holy Spirit, is governing the world today. We see hatred today, hatred in our homes, hatred in the world. We see witchcraft today. We see envy today. All these are the fruits of the evil spirit. There are wars today, wars in our homes, divorces. There are wars in the world today. There is no peace in the world. People are impatient today. People are angry. People are after money today and nothing else. Today, when you walk in the street at night, you don't fear meeting a lion. When you walk in the streets at night today, you fear meeting a human being because people have become animals. People have become lions. People have become something else. These are the fruits of the evil one. People are rough today. People are so self-centered. People are selfish today. People think of themselves and nobody else. These are the fruits of the evil one that we see today. God is calling upon us to realize that he offers us repentance and he offers us life free of church. For us to attain the fruits of the spirit, for us to produce the fruits of the spirit, we must have the Holy Spirit. And how do we attain the Holy Spirit? How do we get the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that if we repent, and if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and clean us from all our unrighteousness. We need to repent. We need to confess. We need to make a U-turn in our lives. If we do that, God, the Bible promises us, he is able, he is able to forgive us and clean us of our righteousness. God specializes in forgiveness. We live in a world where people don't for forgive. Some, they will tell you, I will forgive you, but I will not forget. And when you do something wrong, they will remind you of what you did five years ago. They are historical. They will go to your archives, their archives, and retrieve your file from their archives of what you did to them five years ago. And they will remind you of what you did. But God, that we are preaching this Day. He's saying to us, if we confess our sins, he will forgive us. And having forgiven us, he will forget. He will not remind us of what we did yesterday. He will not remind us of what we did last year, like what our brothers do. He will not remind us of what we did 20 years ago. He will forgive us and clean our slates and write our names in the book of life. And he will allow his, the Holy Spirit, even the spirit of truth, to come into our hearts. And once he comes into our hearts, 
we will be able to bear the fruits of the Spirit. Turn with me to the book of Galatians. The chapter is 5. Galatians chapter 5. We are reading verse 22. And the Bible says, it speaks about the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Verse 23, gentleness and self-control. And it says here, against such things, there is no law. But those who belong to Christ Jesus, praise God, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You see, when we have accepted Christ, our flesh is crucified. When we have accepted Christ, our human passions are crucified. When we accept Christ, our evil yesterday is forgotten. And he says then in verse 25, when you have accepted, accepted me, and now that you have accepted me, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Praise be to God. The NIV says, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And the King James Version says, let us walk in the Spirit. In order for us to walk in the Spirit, we must accept Jesus Christ. In order for us to, to step in the Spirit, to, to be in step with the Spirit, we need to have the Spirit. We cannot be in step with the Spirit if we don't have the Spirit. First things first, confess your sins. First things first, repent so that the Spirit can come into your heart. When the Spirit is in your heart, He will be able to help you to bear the fruits of the Spirit that we have read about in the book of Galatians. He will be able to lead you in all the paths of righteousness. An outstanding example in the Bible of a man who walked with God is Enoch. And we find that in the book of Genesis, the chapter is 5. And in verse 24, the Bible says, And Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God for 365 years. Enoch was in unison with the will of God. Enoch feared God because he had the Spirit of God. He was able to bear these fruits of the Spirit because the Spirit was in him. Enoch kept the commandments of God. Enoch was a God-fearing man. God is looking for men today. God is looking for women today who will fear him. God is looking for his ambassadors today. He's looking for people who will walk in the spirit. These are some of the ways in which we can walk in the spirit. We must allow our feet to lead us to the right paths. We, in other words, we must allow our feet to take us to places that are going to help us grow spiritually. In other words, we must desist from going to places that are going to bring us down spiritually. We must allow our eyes to watch matters of salvation. As you're watching right now, you're watching issues that pertain to your salvation. We must desist from watching programs that do not build us spiritually. We must desist from reading books that do not build us spiritually. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we need to pray that the Holy Spirit may help our minds to think of things that are eternal. Because the Bible says we must hold on to things that are eternal. We must hold on to God's holy hand. In other words, when we have the Spirit, He will help us to shun the road. When we have the Spirit, He will help us to do the right. When we have the Spirit, we have the Spirit, He will help us to humble ourselves. When we have the Spirit, He will help us to introspect. And where we have gone wrong, we will confess our sins. If we have the Spirit, we'll be able to deny ourselves. If we have the Spirit, we'll be able to surrender it all to Jesus and we'll understand that it is not through our power, but it is because Christ lives in us. And Apostle Paul has this to say. He says there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we accept Christ, we cannot be condemned. Yes, my brothers and sisters, for us to walk in the Spirit, we need to walk like Jesus. We need to pray without ceasing. Our families today are not praying. There is more of television than prayer. There is more of parties than prayer. There is more of social gathering than prayer. There is more of politics than prayer. For us to remain in the spirit, we need, brothers and sisters, to pray. Even Jesus himself 
being the son of man, he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted. He committed himself to God, realizing that he was not going to be able to bear the fruit of the Spirit without getting power from God. We, I'm inviting you today, my brothers and sisters, but we need to pray because without prayer, we may never be able to conquer the devil. And we need to meditate upon the word of God all the time. We need to read the Bible. We need to read the word of God. We need to occupy our minds and occupy everything that we do with things that are eternal, brothers and sisters. We need to put our hopes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. What happens to those who deny the pleading of the Holy Spirit? What happens to those who want to remain being governed by the spirit of the evil one? Turn with me to the book of John. The chapter is 15. John chapter 15. The Bible has this to say to us, to those who do not repent, to those who remain not in the spirit of God. Chapter is 15. The verse is 6. The Bible is telling us, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch. If we do not remain in the spirit of God, we are like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Such a branch a pig thrown into the fire and are burnt. The Bible tells us here that if we do not remain in the spirit of God, we are like these branches that do not bear fruits. And for that reason, they are good for nothing. They are good for nothing. They are collected and thrown into the fire. My brothers and sisters, if we bear the fruits of the spirit, if we bear the fruits of the spirit, just like Enoch who walked with God, Jesus will come and take us home. Jesus will come and take us to a better country. Jesus will come and take us to a country where there are no challenges, a country where there are no wars, a country where there is no sickness, a country where there are no symmetries because there is no dying there. I know, brothers and sisters, we live in a world where we are dying. People are dying every day. We live in a world where we look for life and we don't find life. We go to doctors because we are looking for life. We have medical aids. We are looking for life. We have money in our banks. We think it can save us and give us life. But truly, you have seen it all. All of us have seen it. That there is no life in the money that we have in our bank account. Because when we go to the, our graves, we don't take our money there. Except for those expensive caskets, if you are lucky to get one, which are good for nothing. Brothers and sisters, when we go to our graves, we take nothing. It therefore follows, therefore, without saying that life is only found in Jesus Christ. And I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to realize, if you have not yet realized, that this life has nothing to offer. That in this life that we live in, there is nothing good that can come our way. Our eyes must look upon Jesus. Our eyes must look for a permanent solution. The things that we have in this world, the houses that we have, the societies that we belong to, the insurance policies that we have are not going to save us. They have not saved us. They have not saved many. They will not save any that are going to come. But there's only one solution to the challenges and the problems of this world. It is for us to surrender our lives to Jesus and bear the fruits of righteousness and God tell it out there that Jesus Christ is Lord and live lives that resemble Jesus Christ's life and fall in his footsteps so that when he comes in the clouds of glory to take his children home, he will say, well done, good and faithful steward. Thou have been faithful in legal. Brothers and sisters, that home is a reality. Heaven is a reality. It is not a fairy tale. Heaven is for real. And Jesus is going to come and resurrect the dead and transform the living and fumigate the earth with fire. And the people of God will be taken to heaven where they are going to populate heaven, where there will be joy, peace, and peace forevermore. I invite you as we conclude. But my brothers and sisters, there is a better home. There is a better home for those who have committed their lives to Jesus, for those who have surrendered it all to Jesus. If it is your prayer that Christ, when you come, when you come in the clouds of glory, I pray that my name be there in the book of life. Why don't you pray with me, our God and our Father in heaven. We thank you for this message today. A message, Lord, that tells us that you and only you can help us to bear the fruits of the Spirit. We live in a world where we see wars. We live in a world where people hate each other. We live in a world where there is turmoil. 
We live in a world where there is no peace. We live in a world where there are sicknesses. Some of them are incurable. Lord, we have realized that the solution doesn't come from doctors. Lord, we realize that the solution doesn't come from the money that we have in the bank. The solution doesn't come from our insurance policies. The solution doesn't come, Lord, from our countries. But we realize that this morning that you are the solution, in Heavenly Father. We pray, therefore, our God, that you may come into our hearts and clean us of all our unrighteousness, so that your spirit may dwell in us, and that we may be able to bear the fruits of the spirit, that we may be able to share your word to others, that we may be able to repent and confess our sins, so that our names may be written in the book of life. Lord, seal the conviction of your coming in our hearts, and Lord, keep us waiting for that day when you shall come. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>